financial landscape is ever-changing, and unfortunately, history has a tendency to repeat itself. The banking crisis of 2008 left a deep scar on the global economy. But the banking crisis is not over. The banking crisis is not yet over. The largest bank collapse. And now, in 2023, we find ourselves facing yet another banking crisis. By understanding the truth behind the recent U.S. banking crisis, we can gain valuable insights into what went wrong, and more importantly, how we can prevent similar crises from happening in the future. So make sure to watch till the end of this video. Forbes magazine recently released their highly anticipated America's Best Banks list on February 14, 2023. This annual ranking recognizes the top performing banks across the country. Among the top 20 was Silicon Valley Bank, a five-time winner on the list with over $209 billion in assets and a long-standing reputation. However, within a matter of days, the bank would suffer a catastrophic collapse, causing panic and chaos reminiscent of the 2008 financial crisis. As the news of the Valley Bank's downfall spread, clients frantically sought government intervention to recover uninsured deposits over $250,000. The sudden demise of the bank sent shockwaves throughout the industry, marking the largest bank failure since the 2008 financial crisis. It's a stark reminder that even the seemingly most stable financial institutions can fall with disastrous consequences. The aftermath of the crash was like a domino effect, causing a chain reaction of events that rippled through the entire financial system. Regional banks lost significant portions of their value, with one even collapsing entirely in the wake of the disaster, companies such as Roblox, Vox Media, and Silicon Valley startups scrambled to come up with funds to pay their employees, creating a sense of urgency and panic. As the government worked tirelessly to minimize the damage caused by the crash, the rest of the economy was left to grapple with the long-term implications of this unprecedented disaster. This was the largest bank failure since 2008 and the second largest in history. The big question now is, what comes next? The bank's parent company, CEO, and CFO are all facing legal action for fraud. And it's been revealed that the CEO had lobbied Congress to repeal laws that could have prevented this crash from happening in the first place. How did this disaster happen? The crash that rocked Silicon Valley Bank and the tech sector did not occur in a vacuum. Rather, it was the culmination of a series of events that began with the bank's meteoric rise during the pandemic. As the go-to bank for venture capital and tech startups, SVB enjoyed a period of growth in 2020. Startups, flush with easy credit, turned to the bank to store their cash, leading to a massive influx of deposits. The tech sector grew quickly because interest rates were low, and the US Federal Reserve printed a lot of money. It was just too easy to get money. Cheap credit made it easy for startups to get money. When the companies got the money, they had to find a place to keep it. This is where Silicon Valley Bank comes in. Silicon Valley Bank was the financial institution of choice for tech startup founders across the United States, with almost 50% of all startups having deposits with them. In 2021, SVB experienced a massive surge in deposits, skyrocketing from just over $60 billion at the end of 2019 to a whopping $189 billion by the end of 2021. With such a massive influx of cash, SVB aimed to generate a larger profit and it identified long-term bonds as a safe investment. Typically viewed as a safer option than stocks, long-term bonds provide a stable return. SVB invested $80 billion of their tech company deposits in long-term bonds and other securities, allowing them to pay depositors a lower rate while generating higher returns. This strategy worked great when clients withdrew their money slowly, as the banks could easily sell the bonds to cover the withdrawals. However, the plan had a fatal flaw. It didn't account for a mass withdrawal. When a wave of panic hit and everyone wanted their money back, the bank was caught off guard and ill-prepared to face the consequences. The bank was about to learn a lesson about the dangers of over-reliance on long-term investments. The consequences of the 2008 financial crisis are still present today and the market is not accustomed to a high interest rate environment. This situation creates risks for vulnerable areas in the financial system. Unfortunately, the risk management team at SVB overlooked these risks, 
which would ultimately have disastrous consequences for the bank. In late 2021, trouble started brewing for SVB when inflation began to rise in the United States. Typically, when inflation rises, the US Federal Reserve would increase interest rates to slow down the economy and mitigate inflation. However, this time, the Federal Reserve remained inactive, claiming that the inflation was temporary. This proved to be a huge mistake as inflation persisted, and when the FED eventually raised interest rates, it did so very quickly, catching the market off guard and giving it no time to adapt. Meanwhile, the investing landscape at SVB took a sharp turn. As the interest rates began to rise, the investing environment at SVB began to flip on its head. The newly issued bonds started paying higher interest rates, which made the older long-term bonds less attractive to investors. This decline in demand caused their prices to fall, and SVB was still sitting on tens of billions of dollars worth of these long-term bonds, making it vulnerable to risk. By the end of 2022, SVB had accumulated $15 billion in unrealized losses from the fall in long-term bond prices. Normally, this wouldn't have been a big issue if SVB had held onto these bonds until maturity. They wouldn't have lost anything. However, this wasn't a normal time. The rise in interest rates made it harder for tech startups to secure financing as credit began to dry up. For some time, the bank had enough liquidity to deal with these withdrawals. However, the sudden wave of withdrawals began to take a toll on the bank's finances. Despite the risk management team at SVB ignoring the potential risks of a high interest rate environment, the bank was now facing a reality they had not prepared for. Management at SVB made a fatal mistake by investing tens of billions of dollars in long-term bonds and other securities, just as interest rates began to rise. Little did they know, this decision would come back to haunt them. The timing couldn't have been worse as just days before, a small crypto-focused bank called Silvergate had failed due to a similar issue. The failure of Silvergate, although more to do with their exposure to the crypto market and FTX in particular, was caused by a lot of assets losing their value due to rising interest rates. When withdrawals in the crypto market began to happen, Silvergate had no choice but to sell those assets at a lower price than when they bought them. The loss was irreversible, and the investors assumed that SVB was heading down the same path. Fear and uncertainty about SVB's solvency quickly spread and resulted in the bank stock losing nearly 60% of its value in just one day. The problem was compounded when venture capital firms advised the founders of startups to withdraw their money from SVB, further exacerbating the issue. As the panic continued to spread, depositors were becoming increasingly worried about their money. With the possibility of losing all their savings, they started to flock to other banks, causing further problems for Silicon Valley Bank. The bank left its customers in limbo. As the panic intensified and the withdrawals piled up, Silicon Valley Bank found itself in a dire situation. On March 9th, customers had withdrawn a whopping $42 billion, leaving the bank with a negative cash balance of almost $1 billion. The situation was so dire that the bank's internal system crashed, further fueling the fear and uncertainty. News of SVB's failure spread like wildfire, causing a chain reaction in the tech industry. To make matters worse, most of the bank's depositors had a lot more than the $250,000 limit guaranteed by the FDIC. As a tech-focused bank, 97% of SVB deposits exceeded this amount, leaving customers with no safety net. The value of the bank's shares continued to plummet, and by March 10th, its trading was suspended. The fallout from SVB's collapse was not limited to the tech industry alone. The banking industry as a whole was also affected. The collapse of one of the most prominent banks sent shockwaves throughout the sector, causing other banks to reassess their own exposure to the tech industry. The failure of SVB was a wake-up call for the entire banking industry. It exposed the vulnerability of banks to sudden changes in the market and the importance of having contingency plans in place. Desperate for a lifeline, the bank attempted to raise capital but failed to do so. They then began seeking out companies to bail them out, but nobody was willing to take the risk. Ultimately, the FDIC was forced to shut down SVB less than two days after the crisis began. The failure was a catastrophic one for the bank's management, who had failed to anticipate and adjust to a rising interest rate environment. While the US Federal Reserve may have been wrong in their assessment of inflation being transitory, SVB should have had a contingency plan in place. 
In the end, the failure of SVB was a lesson for the entire banking industry. It served as a reminder of the importance of risk management, the need to have contingency plans in place, and the importance of staying vigilant to market changes. While it was a painful lesson, it was one that needed to be learned to prevent similar failures in the future. We're going to wrap things up for today. We hope you liked this video. If you want more, check out our other videos on the screen. Thank you for watching.